proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Religion is a strong delusion the Satans use on the Gentile heathens. The synagogue of Satan created religion not solely to control the world, but to conceal the fate of the nations. The workers of iniquity don't want the people to know eternity exists after this lifetime. Most Gentile heathens live their life as if they only have one life to live. Most people don't think about eternity despite of the spiritual wickedness in high places, convincing the world that they would dwell in heaven with the Most High when they transition. Israelites and indigenous black people, we're not heavenly beings. The heavens was made for the angels and the Most High. The angels are the inhabitants of the heavens. The inhabitants of the earth are made for this world. When it comes to Adam's descendants, we are made to be in the garden. That is why when the Most High settles everything on the last day, we will live in the garden. Then Adam said to Eve, Behold, our hope is now cut off, and so is our trust to enter the garden. We no longer belong to the inhabitants of the garden, but henceforth we are earthy and of the dust and of the inhabitants of the earth. We shall not return to the garden until the day in which God has promised to save us and to bring us again into the garden as he promised us. Then Adam said unto God, O Lord, thou didst create us and make us fit to be in the garden. And before I transgress, thou madest all beasts come to me that I should name them. Then will I in mercy save thy soul and the soul of the righteous to give them rest in my garden. And that shall be when the end of the world is come. The workers of iniquity lied about living in the heavens after transitioning from this earth to get the people to subscribe to religion. Only the inhabitants of the heavens dwell in the heavens. The Most High made an exception for Enoch when the Most High allowed Enoch to live in the Garden of Eden. Enoch found favor from the Most High. The Most High had to remove Enoch's earthly garment before he could stay in the garden. Enoch's earthly garment was his flesh. And the Lord said to Michael, Go and take Enoch from out his earthly garments and anoint him with my sweet ointment and put him into the garments of my glory. And Michael did thus as the Lord told him. He anointed me and dressed me and the appearance of that ointment is more than the great light. And his ointment is like sweet dew, and it smells mild, shining like the sun's ray. And I looked at myself and was like one of his glorious ones. Enoch couldn't dwell in the Garden of Eden amongst the angels in his earthly garment. The scriptures inform us that the Most High created different bodies for certain environments. The time have come for you to know that we are altered beings, indigenous black people. When Adam and Eve sinned, the Most High clothed them with flesh in order for them to be able to live on this earth. And indeed, when Adam looked at his flesh that was altered, he wept bitterly, he and Eve, over what they had done. And they walked and went gently down into the cave of treasures. Adam said again to Eve, what is our body today compared to what it was in former days when we dwell in the garden? Then Adam and Eve came back into the cave sorrowful and weeping because of the alteration in their nature. And they both knew from that hour that they were altered beings, that their hope of returning to the garden was now cut off and that they could not enter it. For that now their bodies had strange functions and all flesh that require food and drink for its existence cannot be in the garden. But when I heard of thy transgression, I deprived thee of that bright light. Yet of my mercy, I did not turn thee into darkness, but I made thee thy body of flesh 
over which I spread this skin in order that it may bear cold and heat. We are not living in our true nature, Israelites. We are altered beings. Just as you heard Adam said, the fairy tale of when a person pass away, they go to heaven or become an angel in heaven is a lie. The workers of iniquity teach such doctrine to get the people to accept their religious fairy tales. Despite the scriptures letting us know the end for the wicked is the lake of fire, there are many people who cannot see that eternity for them is eternal fire. This kind of truth is considered hate speech in the B system. Also, this truth will not get the people to follow the kingdom of darkness. The Satans deceive the people by creating fairy tales in religion to establish evil covenants. The scriptures clearly listed sins that would block many from entering the coming kingdom. Because the Satans have deceived many people and redefined sin, a lot of people ignore the judgments written in the scriptures. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. The reason a large population of people can't see nor understand what is written in the scriptures, the God of this world have blind their eyes. There are many people committing the sins listed in the scriptures in the book of 1 Corinthians every day. Some people are repeat offenders. The scripture said the people who participate in these sins will not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. There are people who say there are men and women of God who participate in the sins listed in the scriptures you just heard daily. The Satans convince them that they can do these things and inherit the kingdom of the Most High. A large number of people don't perceive being a drunkard or a fornicator as a sin because the workers of iniquity redefine sin. The God of this world indeed blind the eyes of many. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. By now you all should know Satan and his angels was judge. The Most High did not give the Satans salvation by covenant, nor did the Most High grant any requests or petitions from the fallen angels. The Most High judged the fallen angels. We all should know they are predestined to the lake of fire. Despite Adam and Eve falling short, the Most High granted them salvation by covenant. The reason the Most High gave to Adam and Eve salvation, they repented of their sin. But that which had dropped on the sand, they took together with the dust wherewith it was mingled and offered it upon the altar as an offering unto God. Then Adam and Eve stood under the altar and wept, thus entreating God, forgive us of our trespass and our sin and look upon us with thine eye of mercy. For when we were in the garden, our praises and our hymns went up before thee without ceasing. True repentance consists of turning away from the sins that cause you to transgress the laws of the Most High. You can't say you repent and continue to engage in the activities that cause you to transgress the laws of the Most High. If you continue to engage in the activities that cause you to sin, you didn't repent. Just because you say you repent, it doesn't mean true repentance have taken place. Your behavior must change. If your heart is pure, the Most High will help you to overcome the areas of your life that is causing you to transgress His laws. Some people, when they ask the Most High for help, it's not genuine. Because they are not sincere, they don't receive the help they need to overcome the sins that is enslaving them. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Israelites, this is why I say to you, don't let the Gentile heathens deceive you when they apologize. Don't let anyone shame you or make you feel guilty for not caring. The Gentile heathens have been apologizing for years and their behavior remains the same. By their fruits, you will know them. The reason nothing changed, true repentance didn't take place in the Gentile heathens. Satan never repented from his sins. Instead of repenting, he waged war with Adam and his descendants. 
Satan deceived himself into believing if Adam and his seed is destroyed, the Most High will restore him. The Most High did not make any covenants with Satan to restore him. That is why he's angry with the seed of Adam. He believed Adam had stolen his kingdom. Therefore, he has waged war against Adam and his seed. The scriptures in the authorized Bible let us know Satan have come down to us with great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Israelites and indigenous black people know that the hate you experience every day comes from Satan and the people he has deceived into hating you. Most people are not aware of the root cause to the spiritual war that is surrounding us. Religion have turned everything upside down. The people have become dependent on religious doctrines for spiritual guidance instead of the Holy Spirit. The word of God told us that the comforter he prayed to the father for us will bring all things to our remembrance. Everything we need to know, the comforter, the Holy Spirit will reveal. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. The Satans deceived the people to rely on religion for spiritual guidance. Nowhere in the authorized Bible does it say religion will lead you into all truth. Nor does it say religious doctrines will tell you the things to come. Religion only brought confusion to the words of the Most High. The scripture said the Holy Spirit will reveal truth to us and tell us the things to come. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The Most High used the Holy Spirit to reveal the deep things. Today, most people don't look within where the Holy Spirit abides to connect with the Most High. If the people need spiritual guidance or help, they find a pastor or a teacher they trust to ask for help. The Most High, the Father, gave to his people everything they need to stay connected to him. We are the generation that is commanded to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. In order to honor the commandment from the Most High, you have to look within. Salvation was given to the seed of Adam only. The seed of Adam are the people the Most High made in his image and likeness. By now, you should know that we live amongst unclean spirits, fallen angels, and hybrids. There's two species of mankind in this world. The authorized Bible revealed the origin to both species of man walking this earth. The other species of mankind don't want its origin to be known. Therefore, they conceal their identity and take the identity of the indigenous black people all over the world. Religion helped the other species of mankind conceal their identity as well as to take the identities that don't belong to them. The authorized Bible said there's a people claiming to be his chosen and they are not, but of the synagogue of Satan. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Because the two species of mankind have intermingled with each other, there's a lot of confusion of faces. The earth is in the hands of the wicked. Therefore, the abominable species of mankind have taken over this world and changed things to their liking. The only reason they have control when Adam and Eve sinned, they handed their dominion to Satan. Satan gave that dominion to the other species of mankind and all who will do his will on this earth. That is how the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It covers the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? The wicked run this world. Everyone who does the will of Satan will go where Satan is. You heard that the lake of fire is where Satan and all who does his will on this earth will spend eternity. The Satans don't want the people who follow them to know this truth. Satan created religion to deceive the people into following him. Religion was created to give false hope to the wicked. 
Religion provides a safety net to the wicked. The most lawless people on this earth are religious. In the religion called Christianity, homosexuals can have leadership position despite living in sin. The church is supposed to be a representation of the most high. Because the spiritual wickedness in high places have redefined sin, homosexuality is not looked upon as a sin. The mother harlot gave consent by its pope that the people who lust after strange flesh is not sinning. Despite the scriptures in the authorized Bible said, no homosexual will inherit the kingdom of the most high. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men. Most people will ignore the scriptures they believe to be the word of the Most High say to justify their sins. Religion is the place where you can sin as much as your heart desire and you will go to heaven. That is why religion is the strong delusion the Satans use on all people who follow the religious path. In the beast system, the so-called righteous and the wicked are serving the same God. The scripture said, can two walk together unless they agree? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Israelites in the awakening, this is why I say you should have nothing in common with religion. Their gods are not your God. The God of Israel is not their God. Pagans worship multiple gods. You should have nothing in common with the wicked. The Most High command his people to come out of the beast system for a reason. The awakening is happening for you to return to the Most High. If the Most High was being worshipped and served in the beast culture, the Most High wouldn't command his people to come out of her. Israelites, how come you share the same God with the KKK? How do you share the same God as Rome? The scripture says Satan is the prince over Rome. Samuel is an angel whose name was been interpreted as meaning angel or God of poison. He is the guardian angel of Rome, another enemy of Israel. He is considered in legend a member of the heavenly host who fell. He is equated with Satan and the chief of the evil spirits. He is the angel of death. In this capacity, he is a fallen angel, but remains the Lord's servant, or at least under his control. As a good angel, Samuel resides in the seventh heaven, although he is declared to be the chief angel of the fifth heaven. The scripture said the prince of Rome and the prince of Persia are your two biggest enemies. Why do you share the same God with the Romans, Israelites? The scriptures reveal Satan is the Romans' God. Satan is their prince. Many of you believe they serve the God of Israel. Israelites, the heathen's gods are not your God. Satan used religion to create a God that imitates the most high. The reason Satan imitates the most high through religion to get followers as well as to deceive the wicked into believing salvation come from religion. Most Gentile heathens believe Satan. That is why they welcome and force Satan's will in their nations as well as in this world. The world is in the hands of the wicked. Israelites, we have been homeless since the Most High removed us from his sight and scattered us into all the kingdoms of this world. We don't have a nation of our own. We live in the land that are occupied by the Gentile heathens. We follow the laws the Gentiles have for the lands they stole. We don't have a kingdom in the beast system that belongs to us. All the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. They departed not from them until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants, the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. The Satans use religion to imitate the prophecies as well as to deceive the people into believing they can sin freely while their God takes all of their sins away. The doctrine of Jesus taking the sins of the world away give the people a false sense of security. Some people believe they can sin freely and Jesus would carry the burden of their sins. Israelites, this is one of the many false promises Satan offer all who accept Christianity as their religious faith. Christianity don't hold anyone accountable for their actions. 
Also, Christianity allowed the people to sin freely while believing Jesus have taken their sins away. Israelites, if the Most High sent the word of God to take the sin of the world away, that would mean the Most High has removed his laws. Remember, sin is transgressing the laws of the Most High. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. The Most High, the Father, never abolished his laws. The Council of Nicaea abolished the laws of the Most High with their wild doctrines. The Most High, the Father, never removed his laws. The laws of man prevail in the beast system, while the laws of the Most High is non-existent in the Gentile nations. The Most High cannot hold his people accountable without laws. The day of the Lord wouldn't be coming on all the heathens if the heathens didn't violate the laws of the Most High. The Gentile heathens have found comfort in satanic religious institutions. Due to their false sense of security and religion, the Gentiles have become prideful. The Gentiles saw how they have gotten away with all of their savagery. They've noticed how no one come to our rescue when they rise against us. The Gentile heathens noticed how their fathers was never held accountable for their actions. The Gentile heathens believe they are untouchable. They even say in their hearts that their God have blessed them. That is why they will always serve Satan because Satan gives to them the desires of their flesh. The Gentile heathens commit murders and theft. The government in their nations reward them. This reminds me of the time when the people chose the murderer Barabbas over the Messiah. They let the murderer go and hang the Messiah. For of necessity, he must release one unto them at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! The same people who hang the word of God on a tree is now the head leaders of the largest religious faith that proclaimed to worship the one they hung on a tree several years ago. The mother harlot proclaimed over three billion worship and served the same person they rejected openly. I don't know how can Israelites in the awakening serve the same God as their enemies. The delusion on Israelites and Gentiles in the end time is in full effect. The Gentile heathens will transgress the laws of the Most High and turn around and say they are blessed and highly favored. In addition, they hold themselves not guilty of any wrongdoing. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. Most Gentile heathens are celebrating their cruelty against the people of the Most High. They've created many holidays to celebrate their victories in conquering the people of the Most High. Satan gave to the heathens the dominion he took from Adam and Eve. The Gentile heathens feel they can say and do whatever they want to the Israelites as well as the rest of the descendants of Adam and Eve. The Gentile heathens create laws that give unclean spirits authority to possess the people in their nations. That is why marine spirits are running rampant in the Gentile kingdoms because they have made laws to protect those who engage in the sin of homosexuality. This is why the day of the Lord is a day of darkness, a day when every Gentile heathen will be held accountable for their actions. The scriptures describe the day of the Lord as a gloomy, dark day that will bring fear into the hearts of the inhabitants of the earth. The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men, that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. The day of the Lord is happening because the inhabitants of the earth have sinned. Today, we have ministers in the pulpits teaching Jesus has taken the sins of the world away. 
The day of the Lord wouldn't be happening if Jesus took all the sins of the world away. The day of the Lord will come upon all the heathens because they have transgressed the laws of the Most High, as well as all of their detestable practices that go against the natural order. The blood of the wicked will pour out on that great and terrible day. And I will bring distress upon men, that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. There's multiple scriptures in the authorized Bible that talks about the day of the Lord. The scriptures describe that day to be a terrible day. Fear will come upon the hearts of the inhabitants of the earth. The scriptures describe the ruthlessness of the members in the army of the Most High appointed to afflict the Gentile heathens for their abominations. The day of the Lord is a day reserved for the Gentiles' punishment. I can read in multiple scriptures of certain judgments reserved for certain nations on that great day. The nations whom the scriptures speak of are not aware of the judgment because religion hide the judgments against the Gentile nations. When the Satans gave to the Gentile heathens all the land in this earth to colonization, the heathens changed the name to majority of the land they have occupied. By changing the name to the lands, the Satans conceal the judgment that is reserved for that nation. I will give you some examples. There are specific judgments set against certain nations. Edom, Jacob's brother, is said to be the end of the world. His land is seared. The Most High said he will not turn away Edom's punishment because of his wrath against his brother. Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath for ever. There are nations that assist Edom in pursuing his brother Jacob. The scriptures talk about Gaza, Tyrus, Philistines, and countless other nations that help Edom in the destruction of his brother, Jacob. Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Gaza, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they carried away captive the whole captivity, to deliver them up to Edom. But I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, which shall devour the palaces thereof. And I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod, and him that holdeth the scepter from Ashkelon. And I will turn mine hand against Ekron, and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, saith the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Tyrus, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom, and remembered not the brotherly covenant. But I will send a fire on the wall of Tyrus, which shall devour the palaces thereof. The nation of Ammon was violent towards the women. They stole land to enlarge their territories. The Most High have judgment reserved for specific nations for specific sins they have committed against the people of the Most High. The kings of Ammon will go into captivity according to the scriptures. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of the children of Ammon, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have ripped up the women with child of Gilead, that they might enlarge their border. But I will kindle a fire in the wall of Rabbah, and it shall devour the palaces thereof, with shouting in the day of battle, with a tempest in the day of the whirlwind. And their king shall go into captivity, he and his princes together, saith the Lord. The mother harlot is another example. Babylon will be desolate according to the scriptures in the book of Revelation. Many nations will weep when the mother harlot is judged. Babylon's downfall is recorded, yet the people the judgment is decreed against have no idea what is coming to their nation. One of the main reasons some Gentiles have no clue, religion hide the judgment of the most high against the nations. When they change their name to all the land they conquered, Changing the names conceal the true identity of the land they have stolen and occupied. The black people who are indigenous to those land still dwell in their land. The indigenous black people are not in control of their land. The heathens who stole the land are in control of their land. 
Although the heathens change the land name, it doesn't change the judgment set for the nations that dwell there. The promised land was given to the Israelites as an inheritance. The book of Kings confirmed that the people that are currently living in the promised land are not the Israelites, but heathens the Assyrian king took to live on the promised land until this day. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Cathar and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sephavaim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. Although the people living in the promised land are not the Israelites, the workers of iniquity in the beast culture identify the people by place of birth. The workers of iniquity assign the modern people the identity of the indigenous black people who dwell there. Every judgment set for the land will come to pass regardless of the nationality of the people that dwell there. Religion convinced a large population of people that they will be saved if they accept Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. The Satans focus on Jesus in religion to hide the judgment reserved for the Gentile heathens. Most Gentile heathens are unaware of the judgment because they are too busy being spiritual Israel, as well as being grafted in. The replacement doctrine is another way the workers of iniquity hide the judgments reserved for the Gentile heathens. Israelites, that is why the heathens spend a great amount of time trying to be us because they don't want to see the day of the Lord. Satan cannot in any way fulfill the promises he made to the heathens. No covenant was made with the other species of mankind and the fallen angels to be rescued from their afflictions. The covenant was made with Adam and his seed only. But Satan, the hater of all good, thought within himself, Whereas God has promised salvation to Adam by covenant and that he would deliver him out of all the hardship that have befallen him, but has not promised me by covenant and will not deliver me out of my hardship. Nay, since he has promised him that he should make him and his seed dwell in the kingdom in which I once was, I will kill Adam. Not all people are descendants of Adam. Religion give hope to the other species of mankind that does the will of Satan on the earth salvation. If the Most High didn't grant salvation to the seed of the fallen, false doctrines and false idol gods can't save them, no matter what their idols promise them. The Most High placed spirit of authority over the Gentile nations to lead them away from him for a reason. The Most High is not interested in saving the wicked. And he sanctified it and gathered it from amongst all the children of men. For there are many nations and many peoples, and all are his. And over all have he placed spirits in authority to lead them astray from him. Religion will have you convinced that the Most High love all people and will save all people. Unrepented people don't want to be saved. Israelites, that is why we have to let the will of the Most High be done. The Valley of Jehoshaphat is where the Most High through the word of God will judge all the Gentile nations for how they treated his people. There are a lot of Israelites asking the heathens for reparation. The Gentile heathens have declined to give the Israelites reparation. If the heathens give the Israelites reparation, that means they have to acknowledge the wrong they have done to us. Most Gentile heathens will never acknowledge the wrong. Therefore, reparation will never come from the heathens willingly. We can't expect reparations from the Most High. When the Most High bring all nations to the Valley of Jehoshaphat, they will have to answer to the word of God on to why they refuse reparation. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the Valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. The Gentile heathens may not want to explain to us why they refuse to give us reparations. On the day of their trial, when the Most High through the word of God bring all nations to the valley of decisions to put them on trial for the mistreatment of his people, they will have a lot to say then. No nation is exempt. All nations will be in the valley of Jehoshaphat. When the colonizers was casting lots for my great-grandmother, great-grandfather, uncles, aunties, and cousins, they had no problem. The slave market was overflowing with my ancestors. This is the meaning to Black Friday. If the Gentile heathens were sorry, why does Black Friday and all their diabolical holidays continue until this day? 
Israelites, don't let the Satans deceive you with the spirit of sympathy. The Gentiles know what they are doing. The day of the Lord is reserved for their afflictions. They sold our ancestors for alcohol and turned the men into breeders. And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for an harlot, and sold a girl for wine, that they might drink. The scriptures in the authorized Bible documented everything the Gentile heathens have done to the people of the Most High. Despite of the truth, the Gentile heathens will continue in their unrepented ways. The Gentile heathens may not want to give us reparations. The Most High will return to them all they have done to his people. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. The same nations, Naphtali, the son of Jacob, saw that would possess the 12 tribes in captivity are the same people the Most High, through the word of God in the valley of Jehoshaphat, will question for his possessions the heathens have stolen and offered to their idols in their wicked temple of sins. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon and all the coasts of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried into your temples my goodly, pleasant things. The scripture you just heard revealed that the Gentile heathens have secret vaults. They have stolen the Most High's precious things and display it in their temples. The artifacts that will clear up all the confusions created by the Satans, the Gentile heathens hide in their secret vaults. The Most High made Putin expose what he was hiding in his vaults. Many nations have made requests to have their artifacts returned. The heathens display the precious things of the Most High in their museums and other places. The Gentile heathens notice how the mistreatment of us don't have zero effect on them. They have been afflicting us for over 400 years in the land of our captivity. Everyone that rise in our defense, the Gentile heathens eliminated. The Gentile heathens believe there's no one to plead our cause. On the day of the Lord, the Most High would say to the heathens, prepare for war. Gather your mighty men. Will the Gentile heathens dare to fight with the mighty ones from the army of the Most High that came down to execute the wrath of the Most High? Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords, and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened, and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. The Most High prophesied to the Gentile heathens about their end. The scriptures in the authorized Bible reveal the valley of Jehoshaphat is a valley of decisions. The fate of the Gentile heathens will be decided there. The scriptures went on to say that there will be multitude upon multitudes in the valley of Jehoshaphat. The scripture said the sun and the moon will be darkened. The stars won't give light. On the day of the Lord, the Most High will be the hope we have been waiting for to stand up for us. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. But the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. The book of Matthew explained the same atmosphere when the word of God returns to gather his elect from the four corners of the world. Right before his coming, the sun will be darkened and the moon won't give its light. The scriptures in the book of Matthew confirm what is written in the book of Joel. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. 
and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. The day of the Lord happens immediately after the great tribulation, as you have heard. The very first thing the Most High will do is gather his people. After the gathering of the people and the righteous, the word of God will strike down the kings of the earth. You learn the kings of the earth are the leaders in the Gentile nations that serve the Satans. The word of God will put an end to all that conspired against his people. The sword that will come out of the mouth of the word of God will smite the nations. Religion have convinced many to believe Jesus is coming to smite the nations. The word of God will smite the Gentile heathens. The word of God will execute the wrath of the most high on the Gentile nations on the day of the Lord. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Israelites, this is why we have to keep our composure. It may appear as if there's no one to plead our cause. The Gentile heathens have done a lot to us. The word of God, many of you don't know him. My prayer is for the Most High to touch the hearts of the Israelites that continue to reject the true Messiah. I pray that the Most High would draw his people to his begotten son. That is the only way you can come to the Messiah that came in the Father's name. The scripture said the Most High, the Father, have to draw you to the true Messiah. Majority of you was led to the Messiah that came in his own name in religion. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. I hope the Israelites in the awakening will allow the Most High to lead them to the true word of God. Israelites, it's important for you to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to you. The word of God is the one that came in the Father's name when he was flesh. He will be the one to stand up for us when the days of our affliction is over. A lot of Israelites have no idea that we're living in the days of our affliction right now. That is how the Gentile heathens can rule over us. When Jacob's trouble come, the great tribulation, our afflictions will multiply. At the end of our affliction and at the beginning to the day of the Lord, the Most High will send the word of God to recompense to the Gentile heathens for all they have done to us. Israelites, we all want to see our enemies fall. However, the scriptures warn us to be patient for the day of the Lord. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Israelites, I know right now we have been the punching bag to the Gentile heathens all over the world. The Gentile heathens disregard us and treat us as if we're worthless. Remember, we're living in the days of our afflictions. We are serving a sentence for the sins of our fathers and our own sins. Despite of our affliction, the word of the Most High give us hope. We won't be last forever. The scriptures reassure us that the first will become last and the last will be first. So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. The day of the Lord will recompense the Gentile heathens for all they have done towards us, as well as the abominations they have allowed the Satans to do on the earth through them. The times of the Gentiles will come to an end. The Gentiles' end is closer than you know. Israelites, don't allow the Satans through the heathens cause you to forsake the Most High at this time. Our redemption is close. I am glad to know that despite of all of our troubles, the Most High will save us from the day of the Lord. Israelites, continue to put your faith and trust in the Most High until the times of our affliction end. Don't let the Gentiles discourage you. Jacob's time to reign is after the day of the Lord. Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? 
The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion.